How is it going, everybody? This is the Uncanny Omar, and to my right is... Who are you, man? Who are Dom you? of X, content creator by the same name, YouTube channel by the same name, X-Men podcast by the same name. I am the assistant editor of ComicReleases.com, your one-stop shop for all of your collected edition release updates to the date and notated solicitations and NMC project intern, of course. How are you doing today, Omar? Uh, well, uh, I'm doing okay. I did... All the reading, all of the reading this morning uh, from 6 a.m. until I had an uh, eye appointment because my eye has been bothering me for the last, since last Wednesday. And I was like, well, my eyes are really important to what I do for a living. So I need to go and make time to go to the doctor I completely and slide back in that. to do this. Uh, so I think it's just an irritation. So some drops might clear it up. So here's hoping. Um, but that I'm doing great. I'm doing great. We kicked off the amazing whew, three hour stream yesterday of the most wanted Marvel omnibus and everybody's voting and thank you, Dom. I get to thank you personally now instead of just giving you a shout out, but you were a big part of that. It was a lot of work putting that together. It was and... fun work though. It's the best step of work, honestly. <laughs> oh yeah. If we're, if we're going to build spreadsheets and comic books, uh, <laughs> my eyes are probably hurting from reading trouble. Uh, that is so true. That is so true. You are right. You're right, my friend. It was it was pretty awful. I, I recorded that and we might put our book club on YouTube. Omar, I have to put in the pre-order before April 1st. Wanted to know if you have any new info. No new info on the wait, I do. They're oh they're different. I'm um um they're different, but I can't say anything until I have the video approved. So oh, they are different though, they're not the same. One's by Ezad Ribich and oh my gosh, who's the other artist? Uh, da, 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 da. I, I, I don't have. Oh, I don't have access to it on this computer. As that Ribbage is the standard edition. It's the one where Wolverine's about to cut down Magneto mm. from House of M number eight. What's the direct market? Oh, my brain. Uh, can't think. Can't think now. Sorry, I don't have my laptop here. Uh, Tiger Eyes Marvel Omnibus voting poll. Yes, right here. Love that you're getting indie previews down. That was Dom's idea. He's the one that brought it to the table. He's like, hey, man, I can help out. And I'm like, cool. What do you got in mind? How about you do more work? And I said, yeah, that sounds good. Let's do it. <laughs> so here we are with another live video on my busy week. Every end of the month is always my busy week, but I'm here for it. Um, yeah. So Dom puts together the solicitations for uh, trade paperback, single issues for every one of these publishers and he does it at comicreleases.com which is an amazing website so that's what we're going to be looking at today we are going to be looking at the solicitations for dark horse comics idw boom comics and image comics and if you're wondering wait a minute where is the solicitations for uh titan comics they're just re-releasing a bunch of stuff is what they're doing. So that's what's going on. So I hope everybody's doing well. And we're going to go ahead and start this. I'm going to give a one. quick shout out to my boss, uh, Mr. Chris Parkhouse, a.k.a. Webhead, who lets me do them and help out uh, every single month. So big shout out to him as well. Okay. There you go, Chris. Chris is a good guy. Webhead. Um, okay, I'll be sharing my screen. We're going to be looking at Boom first. So let's let's take a look at what solicited for the month of June. Solicitations. Okay. Hey, Justin, how are you, buddy? My gosh, is this the real Domar? Or big fan? Wait a minute. Why is his name first? What's going on here? <laughs> Should not be Omar of X? What's up, Keenan? <laughs> how are you, dude? Hit me back up, man. Hit me back up on Hangouts. Keenan is my guy that has made our intros, and he's an amazing, amazing um, editor. And he's out of Canada. Oh. All right. Let me share screen and get to it. Okay. We are going to be looking at Boom Studios first, and we're just looking at the trade paperbacks and collected editions, just in case. People are wondering where are the single issues. Once in future book, the Lux Edition Volume 2. Now keep in mind, there's also a slipcase. The hardcover will have 
I think that one is four. Yeah, it is forty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. While the slipcase edition is seventy nine dollars and ninety nine cents. So that's a big one. This completes the whole once in future. It's so good, and I cannot wait to finish this out. I, no, I freaking love uh, this series. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm the grandma is probably my favorite character. I won't explain. Who so it's my is. wife's <laughs> Melanie loves the grandmas. That's her type of old lady. <laughs> no, no, for sure. But no, this is a fantastic series. Also a beautiful looking book. Like Dan Mora is, was, was born to draw comics. Like I, yep. I can't stress enough just how gorgeous and just perfect the layouts and all the arts and all the finishes are like, it is absolutely insane. And it's just another Kieran Gillen masterpiece. It's awesome. Um, I The only thing I want, in addition to finishing out the series and how wonderful it is, is the addition of the covers that were not collected in the first one. But being that the first one collected 18 issues and this one collects, what is this, 12 issues? 12 issues. I'm pretty sure we're going to get all the covers here. So, yep. Omar has finally given up on, no, I'm still editing. I actually have to film. After this, no, after I interview Daniel Warren Johnson, I'm not name dropping. That's literally my plan. I have to edit that or film that video, then edit. Uh, Firefly, the Fall Guys hardcover. This is book 14. Now, they have put out library editions before from Boom Studios collecting a lot of these Firefly stories. Uh, but it's Sam Humphreys and Jordi Perez working on that book. And the trade paper bags, we have. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Recharged Volume 5. So again, in trade paperback format, collecting Mighty Morphin Power Rangers 115 to 118. $18.99. I haven't read this because um, I, I, I read them in hardcover, so I haven't gotten this far yet. Uh, uh, do you keep up with Power Rangers or do you even like it? Uh, I've got a lot of friends who are super into Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. uh, I also read them in hardcover, unfortunately, as well. Like They're all single-issue people. Uh, trying to keep up with the series, but I'm just like, man, I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. There's just a lot. Uh, they're they're good. I mean, they're good though. No, it's all, like all the else. Boom Power Ranger stuff has been amazing from what I've read. So mm -hmm. always count me in whenever there's a Power Rangers book. I know it's going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, I, I dig him. I dig him. I, and I didn't even grow up with Power Rangers. I just really like the either. story and the art. Uh, Slow Burn, the soft cover by Ollie Masters. And this collects the five issue. I think it's a mini series, right? It, it, it doesn't say volume one. Yeah, no, it's a mini series. Once upon a time at the end of the world. I cannot wait for this. But this I'm is also good like, stuff. This is a hundred percent. This is Jason. <laughs> Aaron. Yeah, Jason. That, I, I bought the first trade and I loved it. Mm -hmm. And then I said, no more trades. I'm <laughs> gonna see because I know the art is so good, mm -hmm. and I know that we're gonna get a hardcover one one day. I know we're gonna get a hardcover. It's too good not to get a hardcover. Plus, you got Jason Aaron, right? Yeah, that guy, it's going to happen. It's going to yeah, happen. It just might be a little longer. That's the only thing that sucks about not getting the trades. It's like, oh, I have to wait. Dang it. Uh, Dune, House of Trades, Volume 1. Collecting for the first the, time, uh, it's in trade paperback, I believe. They've only come out with the hardcovers for Dune, mm -hmm. I yeah. believe. So, first time. I've heard nothing but good things about the Power Rangers. Where should I start? I, if you can find it in print... I would suggest getting year one. That is a phenomenal place. To I believe start. Year, year one just got put back into print back yeah, in November. It was restocked in November. Restocked I it. think year two might have been re or it was coming to restock. So those books should stay in print. They're so good. Uh, year one is the best place to start. Mm -hmm. But remember, it's tricky when you're looking at year one because there is a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers book one. It's also a hardcover. So make sure it says year one and you see Kyle Higgins name on it. Uh, because book one only has Ryan Parrott's name. And it's a it's completely a great, different Power Rangers set team. Yeah, because it takes that takes place after this big, big uh, event that happened. And Magic Book 2, collecting issues 11 through 20. That's a thick trade. I didn't know Jed McKay was writing these stories. And, oh, Rocco's Modern Rocco. Life. And Afterlife. My, that reminds my brothers love that show. And... Collecting Modern Life 1 through 8 and Modern Afterlife. Whoa, that got dark really mm -hmm. quick. Modern Afterlife. Modern Afterlife. Yeah. All right. So that's it for Boom. Now we need to go to... Let's do a little IDW. Let's do some IDW here. 
So we have hardcovers, Defiant. This is Star Trek Defiant Volume 2. Another piece of the action. Oh, Omar, the uh, stream window didn't change. On Yeah, why is that? That happened yesterday when we were doing the... Here, let me do something really quick. I'm going to change a setting really quick. That happened yesterday. I think StreamYard's having a glitch. That's so weird. Okay, I'm going to change that setting, and that should be good. Uh, okay, so Star Trek Defiant Volume 2, Christopher Cantwell. Love that guy's stuff. Recently at uh, IndieComp. Like, did you read um, – one of my favorite books last year was The Blue Flame. That book was, that was good. amazing. That was really good. Loved it. That was made it in my top ten reads. And his run on Iron Man was phenomenal. So that's getting a hardcover. And then Dark Space is the Hollywood special. Jeremy Lambert and Claire Rowe. Do you know anything about that one? Uh, I do not. Um, but I do believe... What did it come after? It came after Scott Snyder's something. Um, that's the only way of... Re oh, the Dark Spaces? Yeah, that yeah, anthology? Dark, yeah. Yeah. I thought that was Dark Horse, though, that was printing that. I think they go after it to different distributors. I can't. Okay. I could be completely wrong, but they've been all over the place with those. And let's see, this is an original graphic novel, right? This uh, that is an OGN. Yeah, this is okay. Two hundred. I love when they do that, uh, and they've been doing a lot of like comicsology originals mm -hmm. and making them into a trade paperback or hardcovers, and. Library Collections, Dungeons and Dragons, Library Collection Volume 2, Jim Zub and Paul Criley. Valerio Skitty on art as well. <laughs> oh, dude, Valerio Skitty is good. He is. I wonder how old this is. Oh, it's not that old. 2022 annual. Okay. Must have been all the work he was doing before Gods and right after uh, Hickman's Inferno. Well, and then there's stuff from 2012, too. So I guess mm -hmm. it's a just an anthology of different series throughout the years. The Hunger in the Dusk, G. Willow Wilson and Chris Wild Goose working on this book. Ooh, I love that cover. And John R oh, yes. John Romita, The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2, the Artisan Edition. This is the paperback version of those big hard covers that they have, like the Artist Editions. 208 pages, $39.99. They are still all incredibly cool, though. Like, every single time, like, I go to a comic shop, like, they always have, like, one or two of those displayed. I just, like, flip through it just because mm -hmm. it's – they're they're perfect. This is just – if you just want the artwork, they are great. Uh, didn't like – his writing on Iron Man, I thought he had Iron Man down. I thought – I liked the way he wrote No, the, his voice for Tony I thought was phenomenal. That's why I liked Iron Man run a lot. I think it, 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 it could have gone longer. I don't think the cells were good, though. Unfortunately, Julian Blue Guitar, American Girl Mysteries Across Time. <laughs> you got a scammer call, John? Send them my way. <laughs> oh, My Little Pony, Volume mm -hmm. 4, Sister Switch. <laughs> and collecting... Oh, this is the new My Little Pony He's, series, yep. not uh, mm -hmm. Friendship is Magic. This is 16 through 20. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles oh, Turtle yeah. Pack Volume 1. And this is based on the 2013 series, I assume, mm. just based on the way that it's drawn. You would be correct. Okay. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, it's an anthology of different the TMNT universe, new animated adventures, and amazing adventures, and just adventures. Okay. Wolf oh, Pitch. It's a Nickelodeon synergy right there. <laughs> the Turtles are Wolf Pitch. <laughs> uh turtles <laughs> uh, okay okay um yeah i don't know what the, this is by Belas lorinchi and the artwork is null Cantwell was great for hellcat and i love this doom oh dude if we ever get another doom omnibus can we have doom on a bear from that cover that's what i want that's all i want or on the spine doom on a bear on that spine all right, that is it for IDW. Now let's move to what do we got? Let's do Dark Horse next. So we are going to do Dark Horse next. And I will share my screen. 
And BW image. There we go. That should work. The TD's all over the place, man. I swear. <laughs> there we go. There. All right. Dark Horse Comics. What's up, Bowen? How are you, buddy? Let's look at some hardcovers. Kanto, man, they're pumping these out. They are so good. If you haven't read Kanto, it is a such a wholesome fantasy story. Mm -hmm. A little bit of violence. I don't, I don't, not not too much though, but it's so good. It's good wholesome content. I completely agree with that. It's like again, I, I usually like well with a lot of indie stuff, I don't I usually don't know what to expect, but with Kanto, I wasn't expecting as much good vibes from the book. I get with like the covers and whatnot, um, but they're good surprises. I would completely agree with that. And Jorge Corona does some of the artwork in here. The trade paperbacks, Avatar, the last airbender, bender, the bounty hunter and the tea brewer. Those are some of the best selling dark horse books in the book market. That's honestly for a long time is what kept them, uh, you know, kind of, kind of, kept them afloat this is the book of evil by scott snyder and jock so i believe okay. it was a comicsology original mm -hmm. is the only reason I, I was able to flip through it but i always pick up snyder and jock whenever both of them are on a collaboration together i've loved them for so many years now <laughs> is that what you said Tom? <laughs> i said tds not that <laughs> <laughs> logan Count Crowley, dude, that book is so good. That's David Das Malkian. Das Malkian, the actor, the the guy um, from The Dark Knight Returns who had the schizophrenia, and from Ant Man, and from Ant Man. Yes. Uh, what else did he play? Oh, and Suicide Squad. The Suicide, Suicide Squad. Mm -hmm. It's it you is a add. good. It is a good book. I really enjoyed it. My buddy Matt sent uh, volumes one and two to me, and I fell in love with it. So I cannot wait for volume three. It's um. Do you know, have you read it? I've read volume one. I haven't read past it. I love the, uh, the, <laughs> the pitches, you know, he's kind of, uh, the, the characters like this, um, she's the like Elvira of this like late night show, but mm -hmm. supernatural things are happening. Oh, so good. <laughs> Cuphead volume three coming out and that is 72 pages. Six by nine. Digest it's, size. Yeah, it's a little smaller. Uh, Haunt of Fear, Volume 4. Nine, still $19.99, 216 pages. Um, and this collects issues 19 through 24 of Haunt of Fear. Some of the best comics ever. Wow, Helsing, Volume 10 already? already. They're just pumping them out. Uh, they're reprinting. They, they called it the Deluxe Edition, and now they're calling it the Second Edition. I switched it up. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes. My bookshelf has been ready for years for this. And that is the Kurosage Corpse Delivery Service Book 6 Omnibus. This stuff has never made it to America. And instead of releasing it in Tonkabon size, they're like, screw it. Those <laughs> Omnibus editions sell well. They sold out again last year. Let's just release it as a volume six. And I am here for it. We'll need a couple more to finish out the series. Loving Ohio by Matthew Urban and Sam Beck. I don't know that one. I believe and it's also another one of the um, OGNs. I think it's a, okay. It's a, it's a graph, yeah. Magic Order making its way from Image Comics to Dark Horse Comics. Now with that was my favorite volume of Magic Order because Stuart Imanen had drew mm -hmm. it, and I was just like. I have not seen this man's work in such a long time, and he's one of my favorite artists. So I'm gonna try to pick it up, and yeah, for whatever my award's worth, I really enjoyed that <laughs> that volume of Magic Order. You got the Dom seal of approval for that one, everybody. Powers Volume Seven, collecting Powers Bureau one through twelve, and then the behind the scenes. So this is a big book, three hundred and seventy six pages, twenty nine dollars and ninety nine cents. I'd like to see the Bendis stuff in OHC at some point with Dark Horse. I don't know if they're ever going to do it. I, I asked him about that at New York Comic Con. No, it was at Baltimore Comic Con last year. We had a talk. Um, Bendis is a cool guy, man. I've always enjoyed talking to him. 
And he said that is something they're going to look at for sure. He doesn't know what to start with, but he does want to see hardcover collections because, you know, he liked the omnibus editions that Marvel was putting out. But that was more of a Marvel decision. That wasn't a Bendis decision right. like because they did Powers and then they mm -hmm. did the, what was it, the Crime Noir omnibus. Right. Mm -hmm. He wants to see big books again. And I was like, hey, you know, Dark Horse, like, they do. They got nice editions. library. Like, yeah. And if you want a big book, they've got, oh, what was what came? I said I mentioned the Colossal Conan because the Hellboy hadn't come out yet. I didn't realize how big of a monster book that was. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Uh, Silhouetted Animator. I have not heard of Mag, Mog, and Owl. What is that? And the Sunny Luna Traveling Oracle. Warren Police is the writer and artist on that. 128 pages, $24.99. Sense time traveler tells, and this is collecting time traveler tells one through five. Marvel's decides not to make that highly demanded swimsuit omnibus. How about they license the IDW to do it? Seriously, IDW has experience making great art books. Plus, Scott Dumbier is awesome. I agree. I interviewed him a couple months ago. Guy's a lot of fun to talk to, just he loves this medium. Transplants is coming out, and I think this was. Comicsology, right? That oh, was a my... Comicsology original. Yeah. So I love that they're doing that. They're giving you options. And mm -hmm. Vampire Hunter D Omnibus Book 6. And I always like to remind people that it's not a comic. It's a novel. But it does have gorgeous Yoshi Takamano chapter like breaks mm -hmm. in there. I wish they would have done this in hardcover, like a little leather bound hardcover. That make I it five, ten dollars more. Yeah, I agree. You put a you put that you you put that cover on a frame, like a mm -hmm. little framed out cover. Ooh, mm -hmm. ooh, that's pretty. Made it, you know, made it made it a little like maybe in the future. Because I I always like even with me, like when I have novels or regular text, no, like prose books, I always like having them in hardcover. So maybe at some point they'll do it, like. I got a Grant Morrison's Luna uh, in, in hardcover. I, I didn't want to bother with the trade paperback. So, oh, uh, okay. Care. Thank you so much for that, silhouetted animator. Praying for BPRD monster size one day. Same, dude. You're not alone. Same, they they know they can do it, they know the popularity is there. And Witchfinder Omnibus Volume 2 is coming out on August 6th. 424 pages, $29.99. Now let's check out Image Comics. Please tell this me you can see it because I think I fixed I it. I can see it. <laughs> Excellent. Image Comics. Yeah, Destro. Oh, yes. <laughs> the hardcovers. Houses of the Unholy. $24.99. So this is another one of those hardcovers that is coming out from Ed Brubaker. And of course, Sean Phillips, Jacob Phillips working on the book too. And when Ed Brubaker got this bug of having hardcovers at Image, he wanted to do what European graphic novels are like. He's like, I don't care about single issues. I want to really, this is honestly goes back to the days of like Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby, that's something he always wanted to introduce, like these bigger formats, hardcovers. And in a way, he got a little bit of it, but not to where we are now. Uh, this is comicreleases.com that Dom of X puts together. He's the assistant director. Well, I'm sorry. What are you? Assistant editor. Assistant editor. I mean, I just gave you a new title. My bad. Hey, my bad, my bad, Chris. My bad, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I no, they are, they are, they're all fantastic, though. Like, I've read um, most of, if not all of the Brubaker uh, original graphic novels because a friend of my comic shop just told me, you need to check out what Brubaker is doing. You say you love him, but you you can't say that you like love them, love them until you actually read most of these. And Big man, change. like the reckless stuff, um, where like pulp, there's there's no shortage of the the talent level that him and Sean and even Jacob Phillips on coloring, like it has all been awesome. They're all incredibly well done, structured. You you talk about the whole shebang. I mean, these are great comics. Well. One of the things that he mentioned recently, well, maybe it wasn't that recently, it was a little bit ago. He mentioned that they weren't going to do oversized hardcover collections of everything, which I, I, I don't know exactly what's going to stay, what's going to go, and you know what makes it an oversized hardcover and what doesn't. 
I think but, I will su- I'll assume that like most of Reckless will probably be in it, but for some of these novels that might not have to do anything with anything like standoffs, they're probably going to stick with that uh, smaller size format. We shall see. We shall, shall see. see. We shall see. Uh, 1949, Dustin Weaver. So this one looks awesome. It does. I was uh, reading about this one. Uh, so this was published originally in Packlist 5 through 7. And this is 1949. Oh, yeah. I I love his art, and I and I'm curious about the book, but it sounds awesome. It does. I love I love Weaver's art too. Loved them on uh like most recently the covers for X Force, but working with Jonathan Hickman, of course. I mean, I love his art too, and yeah. I love Gary Frank's art as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of this book. But then again, it's Jeff Johns uh, teaming up again with Gary Frank. They've worked together so many times. Mm-hmm. Uh, at DC Comics, but now doing their own creator stuff, and this is part of the Ghost. What is this? It? Is part of the Ghost Machine? I, ghost Machine. Mm-hmm. I've been saying it for years, not on this channel, but in other venues, that Jeff Johns, uh, he's you know done a lot of big stuff at DC, but I think it's time for him to actually own some of the material himself and and pump out some things that are oh, like creatively owned by him. And I find it really cool that he pretty much brought all of his artist friends. Jason Fabok, Ivan Reyes, uh, oh, Gary he, he gathered them up at New York yeah, Comic Con. <laughs> or, he did, or, I heard. And and now that they all get to have their own pocket universe at, at Image, I, I can't wait to see what they all come up with uh, for their respective styles. Brian Hitch, too. Like, all, all of them, man. Yeah. Uh, and I really like this story. I about a guy it. who, you know, saves his family. Mm-hmm by throwing them into a bunker, right? And he doesn't escape. Mm-hmm. And now there's a skull guy going around keeping that bunker safe until mm-hmm. his family, or we assume it's him, uh, his family's safe to come out. I, I dug this. I dug it. Me too. It was, it was good. Continuing Savage Dragon, Savage Dragon Ultimate Collection, Volume 3. Collecting issues 22 through 35. So excited for this one because this is when I left comics. This era is when I wasn't reading comics. And I don't have all the trade paperbacks that make this up because they have these. I think they were only printed. Like they had one print run and that's it. Yeah. So I'm excited for this one. Jeff Johns probably has an introduction for this as well. Jeff Johns? Oh, yeah. Introduction by Jeff. What? Okay. (laughs) <laughs> never, I think he would be like one of the last people I'd think to ever do an introduction for Savage Dragon, but hey, here we are, I suppose. So I was reading Spawn from the beginning, and do you have any idea why sp- so many spinoffs aren't collected properly? Um, Let's see, they've done Sam and Twitch, uh, they've done Hell Spawn. What they probably need to do is go back and revisit a lot of those miniseries and see if they can put them together. Like Gunslinger got his own ongoing. I think that's what happened. And some of the some of these characters ended up getting their own ongoing. So maybe the Todd Father and company are waiting for them to finish out those series to see how they're going to collect them. But I would also like to see those collected because there's some phenomenal artists that worked on those books. Geiger has a good dog sidekick. Yes, can't uh, beat a good. No, I agree. Bite Wing. I was telling my brother about Bite Wing, and he was like, "Are you serious?" And I'm like, "No, I'm not kidding." There's a Bite Wing has a little pup. And it kind of looks like your dumb dog. And he was like, oh, well, now I got to And he went and bought Nightwing, like the trade paperbacks. And he started texting me pictures. He's like, do you see how cute this is? And I was like, yes, I'm the one that told you that there's a freaking dog named Nightwing. <laughs> oh, man. Talk about being told off. <laughs> Dandelion from the trade paperbacks. And this is by Sabir Pirsada, Martin He's Morazzo. the guy who... Uh been writing miss marvel along with uh iman villani yeah he was because he wrote some of the tv episodes then he he did mm-hmm. and brought her over with t- uh after miss marvel dark web and now they have their own four issue miss marvel series that spin off from all the other x-men stuff i read the first trade paperback and i enjoyed it i enjoyed it i thought it was better than i you know going into these things like anytime somebody brings in an actor or even a musician it does help to have a co-writer. Um, although I think Gerard Way did a really good job doing his own thing with Umbrella Academy. You know, no no co-writer or anything. Uh, but I'm talking about like, um, oh, who was it? J.J. Abrams' son. I think that was the last time. Henry, that was right? Like, who's that? 
Henry, right? Sure. Who, I think his <laughs> name. Sarah Pichelli, uh Yeah, Hannah. on the Spider-Man book. With yeah. The that, good. that was bad. That was really bad. Uh, Blood Rick. Oh, this looks up my alley. A hulking barbarian. That's all I need. Collecting yeah. the first three right. issues. Fourteen ninety nine. Taylor made for you. <laughs> yes. Perfect for fans of God Country. Yes, and the GD, which I totally am. Uh, yeah, my uh, my co host Amanda is so excited about Gerard Way's new series, The Paranoid Gardens. Looks freaking awesome. And Cobra Commander. Finally, we're getting some uh, trade paperbacks besides Void Rivals. Uh, Cobra Commander. I read the first issue and I'm like, I'll wait for trade. This is so good. Uh, is collecting really Cobra good. Commander one through five. This is Joshua Williamson, Andre Milana. It's got like a little bit without going too far into spoilers. Bar, what are you doing here? There's no poison ivy or Harley Quinn on this stream. Um, it uh, it's got a little bit of a horror spin to it, which is so different than the uh, Duke book that's going on at the same time. So I like that they're trying different things. Yes, yeah, CM Punk wrote Drax. I don't remember. It could have been good, but I really don't remember how if it was good or bad. I just don't remember. But he did write it. Cobra Commander has been way weirder than I expected. Yes, it's weird, but I dig what he's doing with it. It's so different than Duke. Speaking of Duke, also Joshua Williamson and Tom Riley working on this. Jordy Belair. And this collects the first five issues of Duke. They both feel totally different enough, but they both hit the hit it hit all of the notes where they need to. And I find it really cool that Joshua Williamson is getting to do uh, two books in this particular section of the universe, and they they both are really good, like in their own unique ways as well. I don't know how he has time because he's also doing Superman. Yeah, he's also doing he's three right. books at DC. He's doing Superman, yeah. he's doing he's Batman, still Robin, and this. Green Arrow, and it's all like five books at once, plus working apparently for the DC event or of late this year. Like, I'll give him credit where it's due. It's he's doing a pretty good job at balancing all of it. And Kelly, Th yes, Kelly Thompson also has an Energon spinoff book coming out. Is it Scarlet? I think. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Very and it's really I, I got to sit down with both Joshua and Tom Riley and talked about the uh, what they're excited, what to bring into uh, to the characters, and because I asked you know who their favorite GI Joes were growing up, and he's like it's so hard for me not to bring in characters that I liked growing up, like Doc. I love Doc, so I I hope that he does one day. Uh, late to the party, but yay for once in future. Oh, yes. Yes, Philip. Philip. Welcome aboard, buddy. For Image Comics, is it true reprints are based on it if the authors want them to produce? How does that work? Would uh, love to get some Kieran Gillen stuff, but everything is out of print. It's usually because they're so different than Marvel and DC, of course, uh, and it's all creator-owned. It's usually based on if the creators are interested in bringing something back, but also the sales, if sales warrant it. Like, Kind of makes me worry we don't have another um, Michael, uh, what is it, the uh, the Suicide Squad book that he did, Michael Fife. Um, I know what you're talking about. I think it's slipping off. Uh, uh, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. It's on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, we don't have another one of those solicited, so I don't know if the sales of that warranted. Uh, I don't know if uh, Taylor Talks Comics is still here. He knows what I'm talking about. Cobra, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I just realized my stream was 20 minutes back and I was still on my little pony. When are you going to do a Kelly? Oh my gosh, dude, always an instigator. I would love to interview Kelly Thompson. I don't care if she doesn't do, uh, I think she only does audio interviews, which, whatever. Sure, uh, I would love that. Uh, and why do I have to apologize? How's that my fault? That's not my fault. That's your fault. You didn't buy enough of her series. <laughs> Cobra, go, don't blame me. I'm just the messenger. Grizz Grobus, Simon Roy, perfect for fans of Hayao Miyazaki, Asterix, and Arthur C. Clarke. Okay. That's never... A weird never trio would, mix of... <laughs> I would never thought I'd see those three names together. Well, maybe Miyazaki and uh, Asterix, but Arthur C. Clarke, that's throw interesting. That in, throw that in the pot. <laughs> Yo, is he really... Because I'm all over volume two. I need to I, I'd like to have him on the show. I had a I had a really good time talking to him at Heroes Con. And he is he's very passionate about that project. 
Uh, yeah, Image only did one, so I hope I hope uh, he does two. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Here we go. Oh, Cobra's finishing up in singles right now. I think Michael is it Fife uh, Taylor. You told me how to pronounce it. Said he wants to uh, do more card covers, but is busy wrapping up the single issues. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. He only puts out collections through Image. Thank you for that, Huff. Yeah, it's definitely why I always try to buy creator own first before the big two when they uh, pick up new books. Oh, God, that's going to be a fat compendium. You already it? know, but it's not as fat as uh, some of the other ones we've gotten. Uh, $34.99 for the whole fluffing tail. I wonder if there'll be an, uns uh, an uncensored version of this. <laughs> the whole effing tail. <laughs> $34.99, collecting issues 1 through 20, and the I Hate Image free comic book day. Uh, the singles are self-published, but the hardcovers will be image. I think when the next one comes out, he'd consider a trade reprint prop. Consider the trade reprint prop. Oh, the trade reprint problems. I got the first two deluxes of I Hate Fairyland, but I've not read volume two. Oh, they're good. It's very they're fun, good. man. It's like Wizard of Oz meets... <laughs> Fife. I did say it right. Thank you, Taylor. Junior Baker, the Righteous Faker. Joe Casey. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. one He's been one back doing a lot of image books since the... Superman, uh, the Zod story he's doing. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, I'm just glad that he's back doing his own thing, too. <laughs> Have I recovered from the book club yesterday? Dude, I had to go to the eye doctor, brother. I had to go to the eye doctor. I told Dom, I'm like, it might be a little, instead of 1230, I think we're going to have to make it a one. Uh, because I think it, my eye just got so irritated. Yep. And I blame trouble for that wildlife or how to hero at 50 oh god that's hitting close to home here <laughs> or not wildlife i can't even read midlife well <laughs> maybe the eye irritation is oh, good right, you, I'll do like... you laughing at that dom a little too hard no. there buddy is uh, this, i assume this is set in the uh it looks like a radiant black type of book right it's set in that universe let's see here teams up with artist stefano simone Radiant Black, The Last Days of Black Hammer, to tell a totally relatable story of a middle-aged man who embarks on the greatest midlife crisis of all, becoming a superhero and a dad at 50. Good Lord. I, um, little fun fact, this channel, when we were voting on what to call it, it it came down to two, and I, I, I chose Near Me Condition, and I had chosen Midlife Crisis on Infinite uh, Comics. I think it was the other one that I wanted to do. But my co-host did not like the idea of us being in our midlife crisis, so they went with near me condition instead. Good selection. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think midlife is officially part of the ma massive verse. Thank you. That's what the Radiant Black Universe is called. Trouble needs a disclaimer. May cause eye damage for real. There are some stellar releases in June from Image Saga. Still not returning until July. Oh, my gosh. Probably oh, yeah. 2030 for the conclusion. I will say that... Um, that might have killed a lot of the interest in Saga. I still love it, and but I'll be honest, I, I just don't. No, I because me, I'm waiting for the whole thing to finish because I've had a lot of people also lose interest after the long hiatus, and I know that they're only doing about like an arc year. But for me, I don't want to experience the oh, I love this, and then I go one year later, I'm like, wait, what happened in it again? And I know that was like that for a lot of people, and for me, so I don't have that. Uh, that same experience i'm gonna wait out until the whole thing finishes get all the hard covers or whatever they decide to put it in then and then read the whole thing out then which is issue 108 yeah, but yeah. then people will have spoiled things and that's the mm -hmm. only thing that sucks about waiting trade waiting and hardcover waiting mm -hmm. things just get you can't avoid it um i i feel like i've already gone through that stuff with like mage mage 2 like waiting over a decade for the sequel or just being a fan of manga and anime, I've had to wait over a decade for certain titles. So, uh, I blame Fiona Staples. Yes, uh, Fiona Staples needs to use stop using the treadmill and get working on Saka. That is an inside joke because there was a lady claiming to be Fiona Staples on my live stream one day and made a remember. statement that <laughs> it was coming back, and I got really excited because I mean, we've had like Gail Simone trickle in and Stapen Sajik uh, on our live stream sometimes. and. Yeah, boy, that was that was embarrassing. 
I blame your irritated eye on that huge list of omnis you guys covered yesterday. Putting all that together must have been crazy. Oh, Dom can attest. He was part I of it. Yeah, man. We I remember the Friday phone call, like, and just having to like sift through, and I'm like, which ones do I want? Which ones do I want to <laughs> map and put in? It was a lot of again, it was a lot of fun. It's just that I did not envision my Friday night being a hey, map out these certain omnis all together in one when I had different plans. So it worked out in the end, but just a lot of work putting it together, of course. Yeah, we we delivered though. Um, we did. That be on in Staples, isn't it? Cause Brian came on to use Reddit, and he was not pleased. Oh, I got a nice me- the. <laughs> I had a nice message from Brian Cave on when I was drunk, and I'm like, I'm not going to reply back now. I'll sober up and then reply back. Patrol head, Rob Williams. Oh man, and- that was this is this was this is fun. You want to you want to talk about a a high octane no stops book? This is exactly what you should be looking for. Um, you have crazy characters. You have just lots of high action-packed nonsense all throughout mm-hmm. i i, I freaking love patrol head i i hope it gets into oversized someday because i like rob awesome. williams a lot i don't think he gets enough uh recognition we didn't talk about our bone stuff this looks really good ben stanbeck i do like his stuff and dave stewart on colors oh dave stewart huh i love dave huh? stewart the first solo outing of the longtime Mike Mignola collaborator, Bain Stenbeck, an artist on Baltimore and Witch, uh, Witchfinder and Frankenstein, and Cochier, I think is how you pronounce it. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, bringing Dave Stewart with him. Okay, that that is up my alley. I love his artwork. So Patrol Head is hilarious, huh? It is. It really is. Quest. Oh, the is this the Luna? No, just one Luna. It's gonna say the Luna brothers working together again, but it's just one Luna, Jonathan Luna and Crystal Wood, and collecting Quest one through five. So the first trade paperback is that coming out, and then Rocky Candy Mountain Complete. I'm surprised they didn't do a hardcover of this of the Rock Candy Mountain. Mm-hmm. This was fun. I like this. Have you read this before? Uh, I have not, but I know it's Kyle Starks, both on mm-hmm. writing and art, and I've been meeting to check it out. Something I thought that was because this was going to get a hardcover too, but I suppose they went with trade for for this route. But it is all in here, all eight issues, and includes bonus material. And I think that's a new cover that Matt Kent on cover. Dead Lucky. I've read the first trade and I dug it. Uh, but, I know. Oh, I, I, I love. It. I love most of the Massive Verse series, man. These are all so fun. <laughs> yeah. One of my viewers sent me a uh, hardcover because I think they sell hardcovers of their trades at conventions, kind of like Skybound used to. Yeah, they they also do it do some of them via Kickstarter. That's Kickstarter, how I, yeah. I was able to get the Inferno Girl mm-hmm. Red uh, OGN Volume 1, uh, which yeah, was they're, my gateway to this. They're a lot of fun. I really like this. I, I, I love the fact that he's made it into this huge universe, too. But I really like the first trade. I'm hoping they start collecting them after probably next year. Mm-hmm. And th- I think uh, we got th- a, th- an advance. Uh, uh, Edelweiss uh, pu- uh, listing for Radiant Black Year One, which is a deluxe edition. Mm. So uh, fingers t- fingers crossed that after Radiant Black Year One comes out, we just get continue to get a lot of other deluxe editions coming our way soon. I would like that. Me too. Friday by Ed Brubaker, Marcos Martin, and Munsa Vincente. That is a hell of a lineup. And this is a post-YA masterpiece. Yellow Jackets meets the chilling adventures of Sabrina in the third and final volume of his genre-defying older YA masterpiece trilogy. Hmm. Yeah, this is this originally came out in single. So I remember like opening up our image boxes over from my comic shop that I used to work at. And this was different because I'm just like, I, I always expect the uh, standard hardcover original graphic novel uh, piece from Brubaker, but I believe they had 12 of these. Uh, I'll come out and it's finally getting finished. So yeah, uh, also another fingers crossed for an oversized hardcover, but we'll have to see for that, I suppose. And Invincible continuing the reprints of their trade paperback series with a brand new cover. Thank you so much. Uh, the first OHC, as uh, Dom was saying, is scheduled to come out later this year. I didn't realize that. Okay, now I know what I'm in. Like, so every year I do my top 30 books I'm most excited for. 
And then I about halfway through the year, probably around July, I'll do what other books I'm excited for for the next uh, for the rest of the year when we get the rest of the catalogs and solicitations. Kaya, Volume Three. This is the West Craig's. Yeah, West Craig. West Craig. Yeah, I like the first trade. Man, I'm a big fan of Wes Craig. Well, what made me a fan was Deadly Class. Um, but before yeah, that, he was the what was he? he was doing Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, Revival has a compendium. Com oh my gosh, 1,200 pages. That's a big book. I, and I assume it'll have the crossover with was it Chew? I think. I believe. Let me look that up actually. And Phantom Road Trade Paperback Volume 2, continuing Jeff Lemire, working with Gabriel Hernandez Walta and Jordi Belair, collects the road, uh, Phantom Road 6 through 10, $14.99. Kai has a blast, feels like Craig in his version of Command E. Okay, and that is it for the trades for Image Comics. And that's it for the trades in general. Just in general. That's it. That's it. Uh, let me stop sharing the screen and come back to the both of us. And yes, I just want to thank my co-host Dom of X for suggesting doing uh, doing this type of video because I do it for Marvel. I do it for DC. And you all seem to enjoy these, so we will continue doing it. Omar, are we going to meet up at 2.30? Yes, we're going to meet up at 2.30. I'm about to wrap up, Brian. Hold on a second. Call me out on a live stream. <laughs> uh, I had to go to the eye doctor, man. Um, but thank you all so much for watching. Thank you again to Dom. Don't forget to smash that like button, hit the replay in case you then you missed out on some of these. And as long as you all keep watching, and we will keep doing them. I will be back at five thirty Eastern e Eastern time today uh, to talk to Daniel Warren Johnson, and it'll be a live interview. Really looking forward to that. So join us back for that, and of course. There's videos every day, pre-recorded or live. Uh, Dom, where can people find you, buddy? Of course, you can find me on comicreleases.com because I do most of the stuff there. But Chris did help out a lot on the solicits and making sure we got them out in time. Uh, but you could also find me on my YouTube channel at Dom of X, of course, and on social media, uh, TikTok, Instagram, and all that other stuff at Dom of X Studio. Uh, and also on this channel, where again, if there is a video that's published, there's a pretty good chance that I worked uh, with Omar to help him on something. So, absolutely, um, he's been an amazing blessing for the channel. So, thank you all so much for watching. Hit that like button. Um, X Men by Nisa, I, I could have sworn I, I double checked it, I checked Pete's list and I thought it was on there. I'll have to see. We stopped adding because it's a nightmare to add more books, so we stopped after 24 hours because there's such a slog from adding the book and then moving it to alphabetical order. So if it's not in, in the X, look for it at the very bottom, but I'm pretty sure it was added on there. I'll have to check with him. So that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. Hit that like button on the way out. Check out our sponsors, Waltz Comic Shop and CheapGraphicNovels.com if you live in America. I forgot to mention that.